Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Bravo Zulu Podcast. We're back in the studio. Blech. I'm rusty. We're back in the studio, everybody. We're uh, live here. Uh, that's a that's a cap. That's a cap. We're not live. Uh, we're recording in the studio, like live here right now tonight, though. Uh, this is not a live broadcast, but those will be coming back uh, to a semi-regularly scheduled to you on YouTube. So jump over to the YouTube channel, Bravo Zulu, Josh Moore, all right, and uh, look us up there, subscribe, share it with your friends and all that. Tonight, well, what do we got tonight going here? Uh, this is an episode actually I was planning to do before deployment. Um, and now I just got to kick something off here while, while we're back, um, you know, to get, to get going again. And, uh, this is titled, what's the secret? This is something that came up, uh, like I said, but well before deployment, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's well before deployment. But say, uh, we are talking in the shop, you know, as per normal with the juniors around and everyone. And someone said, you know, chief, what's the secret to like staying in? And I was like, well, that's a good damn question. I don't have really the answer, but we could talk about it. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to talk about what's the secret right now. If you're listening and you like this, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what your secret is that has helped you stay in the military, any branch, any service, right? Or even, even beyond that, even in the civilian world, what's the secret to you staying at that job? Right, especially if it's that job that you just really don't like anymore, but the pay is good and it kind of just keeps putting food on the table and you're good at it and it's easy by now, so you just kind of keep doing it. What's the big secret? And that's kind of a, a spoiler alert to you know something we talked about was like, and I, have, I got notes I'm gonna be looking down here at is um, you know, money, money, and there's no secret there. And and one, and first of all, right. We don't get paid fucking enough. I don't give a shit what anybody says, but the pay is good, right? It's not like we broke, broke, right? If we broke, broke, it's probably because you make bad uh, financial decisions. Raise your hand if that's you, all right? I'll, I'll, I'll start so we can all have open and honest conversation, okay? But outside of that, right, like the, the money is not bad, right? It, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, now, depending on where you live, uh, that money could be better a, as in like, uh, that how far that money goes could be better uh, living in San Diego. Uh, if it was just me and I, and I did not have my wife um, working, right? I had my wife, but say, let's say she was just not working. I'd imagine that money might not be that great, right? San Diego is fucking expensive. It's a hundred dollars uh, a tank, you know, for my little uh, truck, right? Um, not, that, that's not even a big truck. And, you know, I'd have to be going electric. I'd have to go be going bicycle, if it was just my income, right? Um, but, you know, with a with spouse that's working, if the spouse got a good job, you know, it's a lot easier. I got a bug in here. I'm sorry. It should bug me. I'm all over the place. But the money, right? The money, it's not a secret. Check a pay chart. After you move your way up, right, the money starts to become pretty decent, right? Throw in some BAH on top of that, right? And that housing allowance really starts making up for what they don't pay you in uh, regular uh, it, regular base pay, right? And it's a big argument that I got into with some other people. Uh, I'll talk about that another time. But, um, right, so with the BH, it, it really starts to, to help out, and it can provide a uh, mostly comfortable living uh, lifestyle. Uh, again, depending on your location, depending on how many kids you got, depending on what you're trying to do uh, with, with uh, like, extracurricular, right? You got to be, you do have to be financially sound. You can't just go willy-nilly about it and start acting like an ass because you will end up broke as fuck, okay? But having a, a spouse that can work and provide that extra income, that is huge, okay? So that that's secret number one, right, is what's the secret is I got bills to pay and it pays them, okay? Um. You know, some other, I'm just going to throw these. I, like I said, this was a long time where I kind of brainstormed this, and I haven't went back to it. I just found it in my notes. Uh, tunnel vision, right? We get this tunnel vision, especially someone who's been in long as myself, of like, you know, you just zero in. You just know retirement's there, and you see nothing else. You know that a pension is waiting for you. And maybe this just the older people now where we still have that 20-year pension at that 50%, right? Whereas now it's the BRS. And it's, it's like what, 40% at 20 years, but then you get to contribute to your, um, your, for lack of a better word, your, well, your TSP, but you're like 401k and then the military government matches up to a certain percentage and very much more on the civilian side of things. So 
no matter when you get out, you kind of have a savings or a retirement plan that you can roll over to a civilian place and have it already kind of all built up to, to however much you put in there. And I mean, if you're not putting max retirement in there, right? So the government can match it uh, to the, to the most you're missing out on free money people. All right. So you, you junior military person out there, BRS, is that for everyone or just Navy? I don't even know if that's for everyone. I guess, I would guess that's for everyone. Yeah, that's where I don't even know that. If you're in another branch and you know that, let me know because I don't know. All right. Um. So, but yeah, max that out, max that out. So, but we get this tunnel vision for this. Like, nope, I'm I'm in the tunnel. It's dark. It's scary. And I just got to get to the other side. I just got to see the light. And that's where I'm at, right? I can see the light. I just got to get there. And then I know it's almost done. And I don't have to move because I'm in the tunnel. I can't escape the tunnel. There's no exits. I can't do anything. I've just got to, I'm in the tunnel and I'm moving forward down the tracks because that's how the military works, right? You put it, put it on the train tracks and the train tracks go that way. And it's just boom, boom, boom. I just got to keep chug, chug, chugging along. How's my tunnel vision look for y'all, right? Uh, so that that's that's it's no secret again. I mean, these aren't really secrets, but like it's kind of like that. You know, what's the secret? It's the secret is like you get have that tunnel vision and don't look, don't look anywhere else. Just eyes forward, right, and just keep going. And that's kind of a shitty way to do it, maybe, right? Uh, maybe some out there would be like, oh, well, you a scared bitch, not want to do it. Okay, cool, whatever, right? I'm also of a different generation where service might have meant a lot more. Right, it's meaning less to uh, the uh, to society and the generations of today. Okay, uh, I was uh, in a generation that uh, watched nine eleven happen at school. Right, that felt a patriotic moment. Right, that has lasted last fifteen years or so. Right, up until a certain point when you know you kind of start growing out of some things and you do start thinking for yourself again. Right, where this new generation. Many of the new sailor or new new military at all, no. They again, it, it was too, we're talking about twenty two years ago, or excuse me, twenty yeah, twenty two years. So the many weren't even born, right? They were babies at, at, at best, if not born until a couple of years after. They have no clue. They're you know how many sailors I talk to, and they're they're so young. They're like, yeah, I was like three. I have no clue what you're talking about. They only know it because of the history books and things of the and and the news that they learned about it but uh they did not participate in that that feeling of that global war on terrorism right all, all that stuff we take the the uh, nko or e-learnings about and all that 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 shit when you when you're in it's like make sure when you're flying you get a window seat because it's the safer seat instead of being in the aisle seat because if you're in the aisle and a terrorist takes over the airplane because terrorist takes over airplanes like it's a regular occurring thing right well it felt like it was you know soon after that that those 10 years after right it felt like it was always on, on the brink of happening we could probably say it probably wasn't but fuck that's where we were living right so you know, when, when you had all that, like all, all, all that compounded onto the, the, the mental brainwashing that the military does and for good purpose, right? Uh, unity and then cohesion and the we over me and things like that, right? Um, they put you into that tunnel. And when you're of, of my age now and you're in that generation where it's like, no, I'm in this tunnel. This is where I'm, this is where I'm at. And that's not to say plenty of people, plenty of people still got out, right? Plenty of people, they're in that tunnel, and they're like, no, they 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 broke down that wall, and they they went and found something else. And but we're not talking about like that. That'd be the question of what what's the secret to not wanting to do it for twenty years, right? Well, the secret to wanting to do it for twenty years is knowing that at the end of the tunnel, there's a grand prize of fifty percent of my pay for the rest of my life, right? That fifty percent, I like, I will get paid longer as long as i have good health and no serious like crazy accidents or anything right retiring at 40 41 living for uh let's say another 30 years at least at least 20 right there's to to the 60s i will always have a paycheck coming in right other people that and for me again for my generation for me just you know it's me but like that was a huge thing you do not get a 20-year pension where do you get a 20-year pension nowadays at 
And some people think, well, that's stupid. That's a bad reason. That's that's dumb. There's ways to make other money. Sure. I'm not saying there isn't. But I'm saying for me and for the, uh, many older generations, many old school generations, maybe even people that didn't come from uh, very well-off families or, or to say it otherwise, very poor families that did not have a stability of a weekly paycheck or bi-weekly paycheck, right? To be enticed with a paycheck that shows up every month for the rest of your life, that's a big secret, right? That's a, that's an easy secret to be uh, sold on of like, yeah, this is, this is, this is it, right? As long as, stability, all that good stuff, all the shit the recruiter gets you with, right? And I'm not trying to get you with that, but that's that's a big that's that's one of the secrets. Is just to be like, yeah, I'm here. It's comfortable. It's good. And I know at the end of the tunnel there's a grand prize that has my name on it every first of the month for my little paycheck. Maybe it's a lot, maybe it's a little, maybe it's not as much as other people, but it's there. Right? Every fucking first of the month it's there. And at minimum, what it covers the mortgage. At minimum, it may be mortgage and, and food. And then the rest, shit, the rest I'll figure out. The extra little bit that I need, that's the easy day. All right. Uh, what's the secret? False motivation. Right? Uh, that, that goes into, and I said, uh, lying to myself about how much how, how much I enjoy it. Um, and that's just, I'm not, I just wrote that down in, in like my first person view, right? Uh, but that's for anyone, right? the false motivation, the, it's hard to tell if people actually really are that motivated about their service and really believe in the shit that is being spewed at the highest levels down. And then they regurgitate it, you know, and, and spit it out, you know, chewed up some more. It's really hard to believe if they really believe that or not. And, and I say it because, you know, speaking with a person, some at one point, uh, and they they uh, was honestly said that most of the shit that they post about the military is bullshit. They just do it because they know that they have people watching their Facebook and looking at their Facebook, so they have to put on a persona for them. And I was like, "Wow, it's pretty fucking fake, right?" For for being where you're at. Like, you can't just be yourself. Like, why not just not post anything about the military when you're on your personal uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, right? Um, but nowadays, you know, going down into a rabbit hole of that, like, nowadays, like, so many people have started to use the military as a, a pimping system to gain and garner. And you could say that's me right now. Uh, I don't believe it is, but I think if you look, if you look at some of the uh, Instagram or TikTok people that let's say are famous or, or have that notoriety, right? They're always in uniform. It's always a a, a reel or TikTok or it's always a message that is like more of the. And I've talked about this before. I'm sure it's kind of a soapbox, but like, look at me. I'm in the uniform and I'm giving all this information, and you should trust me and believe me because I'm in the uniform, and my uniform gives me the credibility that you're seeking so go ahead like subscribe follow me and sign up for these courses that i had chat gpt fucking you know open up for i saw one today kind of like irked me a little bit i'm sorry that, that's what's kind of like uh got me going but like motherfuckers like selling one giving out bad information that they got called out on and then doubling down i'm like well if you'd like to learn more you know sign up for my master class on how to use a va loan to buy a house are you fucking serious? Right? But it, it goes back to like the the uniform for whatever reason buys some credibility with other uniformed people, right? Uh, and then also with civilians, which civilians aren't even entitled to the benefits that this person was talking about. So it's only they're catering only to the veteran uh system, right? But being that they're in the uniform for some reason, uh rank unknown and everything else aside. But there's credibility there. So sure, let me buy your master class for $50 so I can learn how to use a VA loan. Or I could just go to all the fucking free resources out there, right? But again, going back to the what's the secret of saying in it, it's that false motivation of like, let me do all these things to pretend I'm motivated about being here. But really, as soon as I click this shit off and I'm I'm done, I'm done using it, right? Then I I'm I'm back to hating it. 
Right. Uh, now, you do need to use the military for what you can while you're in to 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 uh, benefit your career, right? But I always think there's like a slippery slope and a thin line between using the programs and the benefits uh, for your for that are there for you, right? And um, to 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 using them to your advantage, right? But not taking advantage, excuse me, of them. Right. And I, I think there's a difference in that. If you don't let me know, but like what I'm saying is there's all, you know, great, great commissioning programs. Yeah. Go do those, put in that work for them, this and that. But then there's the like uh, taking advantage of programs. Um, what, what was one I was just thinking about now I'm having a brain fart. Uh, but you know, it's like one of those, like, let's say we, we talk about like, um, online, like TA, right? Yeah. Use it. Take the classes, but then there's the taking advantage of it. And like, what would I say? Like, uh, not using more than your credits. Cause if the credits are out there, they're out there, but using it, using it while you are supposed to be at work, right? Sitting down at the work computer, knocking out your homework and, and you like that kind of stuff, right? Like, you know what? I'm in, I'm in these classes. And instead of going home and, and doing me at home where I should be doing that, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to use all of the copier paper. I'm going to use all of the internet. Um, I'm going to use their computers. I'm going to use their laptops. I'm, it's a work laptop. I'm allowed to take it home. So I'm going to take it home and I'm, I'm going to use their shit because I don't have Microsoft Word, but the work computer does. So I'm going to use, like, that's taking advantage of, right, those benefits. And that's not even a benefit. That's just like fraud, fraud ways and abuse. Versus just, like, taking advantage uh, for the benefit, right? Like, I don't know if that makes sense. I might be confusing myself, but I, I, I think there's a, a difference in there, right? So, and, and that falls into, like, the, the false motivation, right? Like, you're you're only here to continue to milk the system of everything that you possibly can without giving the system anything back in return. That's, my I guess, my biggest thing why I might be getting to there, right? It is you you'll take everything, every little free handout, right? Every time there's a, an event, um, you know, I, and maybe this is fucked up, but like I've seen people take families to like the USO um, uh, dinners, right? Like a lot of places USO will put on dinners for uh, veterans and for families, right? And it's like, it's not that you can't or you're not allowed or that they ask any questions, but it's kind of like, I see, I, I've seen you there, I know you there, and, and and I've learned that you go there with your family three times a week, but also, like, I know that you could afford this shit just fine, because I've I've seen what you drive, I, I, I know you personally enough, like, are you just, do you just not want to fucking cook? You and your spouse don't want to fucking cook? Um... Are you really that hard up on money because your other financial decisions? Or is it just like, fuck it, it's a free meal, and I'm going to take advantage of it because it's a benefit I have? I don't know. Maybe I'm fucked up and thinking like that, but it's like, like just like, wow, like that, it, those meals are meant for like people actually hurting a little bit. And really, you just rolled up in your fucking, you know, BMW X5, pulled out your three kids, and it's just, you know, it's Tuesday and you didn't feel like cooking. Nothing necessarily, you know, uh, institutionally wrong with that, but kind of got me scratching my head. Like, really? But anyways, um, yeah. So back to the main point of like lying, lying to yourself about how much you enjoy it and the false motivation, right? Uh, a lot of the false motivation shit, right? And that lying to yourself, like, oh, you know, like amping yourself. Yeah, yeah, yo, who y'all sailors? I'm here for the, especially when it comes to things like all all the training. That uh, at certain levels that you're expected to do, right? Now you have to put on these training events, and you're out there who yawn it up. And it, it's, I'm at, I've, I, again, I've said this before. I, I've come to the point where like I can no longer who yaw it up, just to fucking who yaw it up. If I'm who yawing it up, is because I actually believe it. And, and if everyone else is, and I'm sitting in the corner and I'm not saying shit, it's because I, I I don't fucking believe it. I'm I'm not gonna just put on the show, just to put on the show. Right. I'm not going to lie to myself or lie to the sailor anymore about, oh, yeah, fucking who? Yeah, let's love it fucking forever. And, you know, blah, blah. No. Hey, yeah, this shit sucks, people. That's where we're at right now today is this shit sucks. 
So let's get the fuck to work and then get to tomorrow so maybe it doesn't suck as much tomorrow. Cold honest truth, right? That's that that's a secret to fucking uh that's my secret to getting through through my tunnel vision right now, right? As I'm I'm no longer lying to myself, no longer enjoying it. But a lot of people to get through it to the end of it, they will continue to do that. Uh, and here's the best one though, I think, right? The last one that I had on this note was, um, finding humor in every situation, right? Like, uh, some people are better at this than others, but uh, if you a regular listener and, and you've seen me and some of the people on here, right? Like, um, we going to laugh, right? I don't give a fuck what's going on. Right. It, it, it could suck all the way. It could be the worst. And, 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 you know, once we get up and running on some more, we talk more about deployment and some situations and stuff like, you know, I have, uh, hopefully we have some new guests on everything, talk about it. But like sometimes I, I mean, not sometimes I was thinking two thoughts. I'm going to laugh no matter what at the end. Right. Whether it, it's in private, you know, having the private conversation with, with, uh, one of the ones I can trust or, um, laughing at someone and their stupid idea in their face right? I'm going to laugh because that's, what's going to help me get through this, right? That's my secret is like, in the end, I'm going to laugh no matter what, because this shit is funny, right? This shit is funny. The way some people act about it, the way people treat it, all that, right? Uh, as I've been told for a long time from uh, my best friend and my mentor, right? Uh, you know, the, for many people, like this is not real life, Okay, there's real life shit happening, right? There's real shit that goes on. Don't 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 get it to us like like on a warship that could go to war. That's yeah, that's real. But like the functioning of the navy and the military, it, in most part, it, you know, is not real life. Like this is this is just we're just a microcosm of it all, and it's just you just can sit back and just fucking laugh and be like yeah, sure, okay, right. Because most people, including myself, right? Like when I say most people, I'm always included, right? Like you wouldn't be talking to that person like that if you didn't have that rank on your on your fucking caller device, right? Or you would have to fucking answer in another fashion when that person fucking tried to when you when without that, right? If if you was just two people and you was talking like that, you'd have to answer in another form or way. Of, of to that person why are you talking to them like that and a lot of people ain't ready for that i'm not saying i am i'm, I'm not saying this ain't no billy badass fucking uh a line here right i'm just saying like that that's where we're at in the military is it's not real right people of all ranks are protected a lot of junior sailors like to think oh well you're protected because you're senior than me and since you're senior than me you could talk to me like that but if you weren't i'd fuck you up you think that maybe it's true but maybe since you're junior and we're in the military, you're lucky I'm not fucking you up either, right? It goes both ways, people. It goes both ways. And I'm not saying we need to enact violence. I know a lot of people talk about fan rooms and shit, and I'm like, shut the fuck up, okay? I've been in 18 and a half now. Never once was I ever challenged to go to a fan room, okay? That shit is of a Navy well long before my time. So if you're not at least probably 10 years senior than me, you never fucking seen the fucking fan room either. Okay? So don't, don't, don't. And so if you're junior than me, you definitely did it. Stop front. you full of shit. And that's why I'm laughing at you. Right? That's why I can get through it. That's my one of my biggest secrets is I'm always going to chuckle and laugh and then go do it. Excuse me. And then go do it. Right? Because the shit is funny. No matter what it is, whether it's someone huffing and puffing and trying to throw, throw, throw a, a fight about it, whether it's uh, another fucking change, you know, change revision 29.3 tango, right? Who who cares? Like, <laughs> so what can you do? What, can, what are you going to do? You, I mean, it's sure, sometimes we get mad and sometimes we vent that frustration. But even after that, I'm still laughing because you can't do shit. So you might as well laugh about the situation and then go grab the, the fucking people that are going to help you get through it or, or get through the situation and get the work done because usually it revolves around like, huh, here's some more bullshit that we got to do, right? 
And so you might as well grab them and then go get it done and then laugh while you're fucking doing it because it's going to suck, right? And what was, uh, there's a popular term or something, I guess, um, trauma bonding, right? I've seen this being thrown around now. Um, trauma bonding, right? It's not that you're, you're building adversity and resiliency and stuff, right? It's that this trauma that's happening upon you and your group, it's that's it's trauma that's building you guys strong. Not, they don't even say stronger. It's, it's just trauma that has bonded you together, and that's not good because trauma is bad. The fuck out of here, man, okay? Like, it sucks. We all sucked at it together. We're going to suck on it together, and we're going to fucking get through it, and then we're going to laugh about it when we're fucking, you know, three months from now back home or six months. And, but then maybe and it's funny cause this is what I brought up to, to someone I was talking about. Some of this about was like, you know, uh, some, something, some shitty shit happened at, at the last end of our deployment. And I said, you know, well, uh, you know, buddy, uh, when you're an old guy, you look, you're going to look back on this on your last, your, your first and only and last deployment. And you're going to think, yeah, that was funny how we got fucked. And they said, no, they won't. They're like, nah, I don't think so. I don't ever want to fucking be old thinking about this. But I think the thing is, I think you, I think you will. I think when you're old and you're the old person and you did that time in service and it, it was uh, everything that you didn't want it to be, right? But it ended up being a lot of what you will remember and you'll sit back and you'll be like, yeah, that fucking sucked. And, you, and you're going to chuckle. And I'm not talking about, like, it ain't going to be like this laugh, laugh like you're at a comedy fucking show. Like, ah, like just fucking, no. Here's just, <laughs> yeah, that fucking sucked. That's what I mean. That's the kind of laugh we're having there. Okay. Uh, that's about it, as I got for this episode. Just want to get back on here and really get back into the flow of things. You know, it's uh, it's been a minute. I got a few uh, months here until we're back out. So I'm going to try to get episodes out. I got a bunch of episodes I still need to edit and put together um, that that were from deployment. I don't want to say a bunch. I got a handful or so. Um, it was quite difficult, really, to get episodes uh, put together and stuff. Just workload, time load, time management, focusing on other things. Um, I'll try to do better this next time, depending on where we're at and what we're doing. But, uh, you know, uh, outside of that... You know, just welcome back to the show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on YouTube. If you're uh, listening on uh, Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. Leave us a comment down on the YouTube channel, right? And uh, if it touches your heart, share it with a friend. Don't forget, for more information on how you can support the podcast, please visit anchor.fm backslash Bravazulu podcast. The information, views, and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely of me, Joshua Moore. And the individuals involved do not necessarily represent the DOD, DON, or those of the respected institutions or organizations. Thanks for joining us.